God is more than enough. He will supply all my needs. He is my help to die. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh, my God is more than enough. He will supply all my needs. The fullness thereof, everything that I need, you can need your love. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. And so, why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough He will supply all my needs He is my El Shaddai He always looks out for me Jehovah Jireh Oh, He is my God And Jehovah Jireh Oh, He is my God Oh, so why should I worry about the highs and the lows the ups and the downs When by my faith I know my God is more than enough He will supply all my needs He is my El Shaddai He always looks out for me Jehovah Jireh Oh, He is my God And Jehovah Jireh Oh, He is my God And all of the earth and the fullness thereof, everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, oh, He is my God. And Jehovah Jireh, oh, He is my God. You are the great everlasting Father, the one who was. Is to come, Alpha Omega, the line of Judah, the great I am, the anointed one. Oh, into your presence I bow before you. I lift my voice, I lift my hands. My praise arises into your throne room. I will proclaim you in all the land. Oh, my God is more than enough. He will supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. Oh, He is my God. It's Jehovah Jireh. Oh, He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows? The ups and the downs When by my faith I know my God is more than enough He will supply all my needs He is my El Shaddai He always looks out for me Jehovah Jireh He is my God Oh, you are the great everlasting Father The one who was and is to come Alpha Omega, the line of Judah, the great I am, the anointed one. Oh, into your presence I bow before you. I lift my voice, I lift my hands. My praise arises into your throne room. I will proclaim you in all the land. Oh, my God is more than enough. He always looks out for me, Jehovah Jireh, oh, He is my God. Oh, yes, and Jehovah Jireh, oh, He is my God. And so.
So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? Praying by my faith, I know my God is more than enough. He will supply all my needs. He is my help to die. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. you know he's a faithful God, if you know he's a powerful God, would you give him great praise in this house tonight? As we said this morning, he's a God who keeps his promises. I don't have to worry I've got a God watching out for me. Uh, he keeps his promises. Uh, you ought to give him praise for keeping the promise. Uh, I'm feeling one with the Holy Ghost this morning. Uh, I'm refilling another. Uh, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh, welcome to Pentecost. Uh, celebrate his goodness. Uh, It's all because of the power that's in the name of Jesus. Would you shout that name in this house? Now give him great praise. There are needs in this house today, but they're not greater than the power that's in the name of Jesus. You got a need in your life? Just lift your hand right now find someone that's got their hand raised, why don't you begin to pray with them right now uh, that God would reach down and minister to those needs right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, let's pray with faith in our hearts. Father, I believe your word uh, that with your stripes we are healed. Uh, I thank you for the presence of God that is in this house. Uh, I thank you for the power of God. Uh, we stand upon your word that there is healing in the name of Jesus. Uh, even now, let healing virtue flow into lives. Uh, let there be revelation in lives, uh, confirmation of truth in lives. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray, uh, bring strength and guidance and direction, uh, and we give you praise and glory and honor uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, would you give him praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You may be seated tonight. We're delighted, everyone that is in the house of the Lord. Would you give our guest a hand clap of welcome for being at Phoenix Revival Center tonight, amen. We have several that are out traveling tonight. Pray that the hand of God be upon them as they return from their travels. Remember Wednesday night, 7 o'clock prayer. We'll get right into the Word of God. It's amazing what a difference that Wednesday night service makes in your week, amen. Then Friday night, 7.30 p.m. is the Arizona Youth Department kickoff rally at Christ Temple. Brother Strader preaching Please make plans to be there. Then mark your calendar next Monday, one week from tomorrow, the 21st at 7 p.m. Ladies' prayer right here at the church with Sister Sansom. Going to be a very powerful time. This church is tapping into something through the power of prayer, and I'm so incredibly thankful for it. This kind comes not out but by prayer and by fasting. It makes a difference. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm, now that you're nice and comfortable, I want to have you stand again. We're going to worship the Lord in the giving of our tithes and offering. You can give in the pans. You can give electronically right over here to my left. There'll be someone to help you with that. You can text to give if you'd like. Why don't you get out while they begin to sing, uh, greet one another, introduce yourself to someone tonight. God bless you.
For he's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Heavenly Father. The beginning and the end. He's much more than this, my friend. Oh, he's the Son of Man. He's coming back again. And I know Jesus is father and i know jesus is the son oh i know jesus is the holy ghost and all these three are one let me tell you who jesus is for he's the rock of all ages he's the alpha and the omega he's the heavenly father the beginning and the end much more than this, my friend. He's the Son of Man. Oh, he's coming back again. And I know Jesus is the Father. And I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Oh, I know Jesus is the Father. And I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Oh, I know Jesus is the Father. And I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And all these three are one. Let me tell you who Jesus is. For he's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the heavenly Father, the beginning and the end. Much more than this, my friend. Oh, he's the Son of Man. He's coming back again. It is quite early. Why don't you just take some time right now and give Jesus Christ the praise he's worthy of. If you've been baptized in the name of Jesus and you know he's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you ought to give him great praise for truth right now. Would you bless his name? I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the touch of the Lord in this house tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go ahead and let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now. There's a touch of heaven in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I told our music team tonight, I said, let's do a quick turnaround. Get me on the floor early. Not that I'm planning on preaching long, but our music team and all the transformed and my parents were at Praise of Pentecost in South Phoenix ministering today at 1 p.m., Brother Zach, who was leading songs tonight, that it is his third worship service he's led today. And so the body can only do so much. So I commend Transform for going to church and then coming and sleeping in the nursery and sleeping in here until church tonight. God's blessing is upon you. Amen. And I'm excited about that opportunity to give to that church. And so I'm going to continue preaching if the Lord will help us tonight. About what's the big deal about the box? We started it last Sunday morning, preached part one. We went through and talked about that Ark of the Covenant, how we're the temple of the Holy Ghost now. Then I was going to complete part number two Sunday night, 
And we only got one third of the way through talking about the contents of that. We'll reference that briefly. The Holy Ghost hit this place with a call to repentance. And I'm so thankful for your response to that. A healthy church responds to a call to repentance. And I thank God for that. We're going to try to continue the rest of that tonight. Exodus chapter 25, verse 10. It's so good to have Sister Burgess back with us again tonight. Love her. Loved her husband dearly. Missionaries for many years. Told her what a blessing they were in this church during the season that they were here for this pastor and wife. Amen. Exodus chapter 25, verse 10. They shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. A cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. Thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shalt thou overlay it. Shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. Thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it. Put them in the four corners thereof. Two rings in the one side of it. Two rings in the other side of it. Thou shalt make staves or poles of shittim wood. And overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. This is the instruction from God to Moses on the construction of the ark of the covenant for the tabernacle. We're going to try to talk about the rest of what we were trying to cover last Sunday. I believe the Lord's going to help us. Would you lift your hands? Would you ask the Lord to help your pastor? Would you ask the Lord to help strengthen your mind that you can help the pastor preach tonight? Uh, pray that there would be a revelation of truth and there would be a quickening of apostolic power in this house. Uh, would you lift your voice all over this house right now? Father, I love you. Uh, I thank you for your presence that is here in such a very special way. Uh, thank you for the people of God that have gathered. I believe everyone is here on your divine purpose and order. I pray your anointing would be upon me as I minister the word of the Lord. Anoint this congregation to receive your word, God, and to create an atmosphere that you can freely move in in the name of Jesus. Gather our minds together, God. Let a special strength be upon our group of transformed that was at praise of Pentecost today. Quicken them and strengthen them in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Once again, would you lift your voice very loud they lift your head towards heaven and let great praise go from your soul towards heaven right now. That's it. There should just be a crescendo of worship and praise. I feel the glory of the Lord in this house. It feels like it did, uh, like it would have felt in the tabernacle when the glory would descend on that mercy seat. Uh, the Holy Ghost is settling in this place right now. Uh, hallelujah. Halabaka. Yilaboko. Shalabaka. In Jesus' name. And you may be seated tonight. Our title is, What's the Big Deal About the Box? We started talking about this last Sunday morning, about this wooden box made out of shittim, or we would know it as acacia wood today. It was 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, 27 inches deep, covered with gold, uh, a place for poles to be placed through so the presence of God could go with them wherever they went. We talked about the pathway through the tabernacle to get to that Ark of the Covenant. You cannot just stumble into the tabernacle, make your way to the Ark and go in there and have that encounter. But there was a pattern, there was a plan that God had you to follow and it mirrors the plan of salvation we find in the New Testament of repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus and then the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we talked about how that ark has been destroyed. So where does the glory of God reside today? We found it in 1 Corinthians 6. Uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God has chosen in this time span not to dwell above mercy seat inside a tent, but he has chosen that his glory, the Holy Ghost, would dwell within us through the power of the Holy Ghost. And it happened in this house this morning. Someone give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. And then Sunday night, we begin to talk about the contents of the box. There were things uh, that God said he wanted placed inside the box. It was not just an empty box, but God commanded them to place the, the tablets of stone or the Ten Commandments inside the Ark of the Covenant and then two other items as well. We covered the Ten Commandments last week in Exodus 25. God said to put them into the Ark as a testimony. Those, are, those tablets were considered to be the basis of the covenant between God and His people, and they were placed in the ark, in the box that represented the presence of God. The second item that was placed in there was the golden pot of manna, which God had miraculously provided and preserved as a testimony to future generations. It was placed inside the ark as well. Exodus 16, 23 through 24 and Moses, I'm just recapping from last week, and then we'll preach. Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commandeth. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. The third item that was placed in the ark was Aaron's rod that budded in the wilderness to prove that Aaron was God's chosen. It took place at a time when, when some men rose up in rebellion against the priesthood and against Moses and Aaron. And God used this as a sign to establish his priesthood and where the authority of the priesthood would be. Numbers chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Take every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers. Of all their princes according to the house of their fathers. Twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. So one out of the twelve tribes of Israel. One rod for each tribe. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel whereby they murmur against you. Verses 7 and 8. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. And the Lord said to Moses, bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony. To be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. Uh, the rods were placed in the tabernacle. And Aaron's rod, it was not planted. It was just a dead stick, a dead rod. Overnight budded and blossomed and brought forth almonds. Uh, as God signed saying, this uh, is my priesthood and where the authority is. And I want that, but, that, that rod that budded to be placed in the ark as a testimony to my people. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 3 and 4 confirms that these items were in the ark. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And so in the tabernacle and in the temple, that ark of the covenant inside that box you would find the Ten Commandments, the golden pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that budded. And so what's the big deal about all of that besides it being trivia information? We talked about it last week. The Ark of the Covenant represents the glory of God or the presence of God. 
And these items were kept inside that ark, hinting that in the presence of God, there is substance, and you will find some things as well. It is not just a feeling, the presence of God, but there is substance in the presence of God. It's more than just emotionalism. And yes, we get emotional when we feel the presence of God, but when the Holy Ghost falls upon an individual, it is not just to move your emotions. He wants to put some things inside of you as well. Someone give the Lord praise for that right now. We talked about the Ten Commandments last week uh, that was placed inside the ark. It was the basis of God's covenant relationship uh, with his people. Uh, It was a standard uh, of righteousness, uh, letting us know uh, that when we receive the Holy Ghost, uh, God imparts uh, his righteousness into us. uh, And it ought to change the way we think, uh, the way we act, uh, and our entertainment options, uh, and our living and our lifestyle because the Holy Ghost puts some righteousness inside of us and changes the way we live. And God would not allow me to get off of it last week. And there was a call to strong repentance. And I thank God for the response to that. And there was a cleansing that took place because when we repent, He forgives us. I said when he repents, uh, he, when we repent, uh, God uh, forgives us. Because the Holy Ghost ought to change your life. If the Holy Ghost does not change the way you're living, you either are taking advantage of the power of God or you're just getting emotional. But the true Holy Ghost, when it comes into you, it will change the way you think and act and look and talk and dress. The Holy Ghost brings righteousness into one's life. Someone give the Lord thanks for his righteousness right now. There's only one holy one it is him I bless your name I bless your name I bless your name and that's where we ended last week with the call to repentance I want to move on to the second item that was in the ark of the covenant it was the golden pot of manna the golden pot of manna speaks of the miraculous say miracles Five days of the week, the Lord would provide manna to feed two million plus people uh, in their wilderness wanderings. Uh, and on the sixth day, he would provide a, double, provide a double supply so they would not have to gather it on the Sabbath. Uh, and God said, I want you to take some of that manna and I want you to put it inside that golden pot uh, and I'm going to preserve that manna and I want you to put it in the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, and I wanted to always remind uh, God's people uh, that they can expect uh, the miraculous uh, in the they can expect the miraculous in the presence of God and this was placed inside the box that represented the glory of God likewise when we experience the glory of God through the baptism of the Holy Ghost we have a right I said we have a right. It's not an option. We have a right to expect the miraculous. We need not hope about it, wait for it, or wish for it. We can expect it for where his glory is. There is also the miraculous. There's miracles in the power of the Holy Ghost. There's miracles in the apostolic church. I thank God for transformed. You should be dead tired. You're standing and worshiping because you believe this. When the Holy Ghost fills the house, you can expect miracles to be taking place all over the house. You don't have to wait for someone to lay a hand on you. You don't have to wait for someone to call your need out. But as the Holy Ghost is flowing in the house, as the Holy Ghost is moving from front to back and side to side you can reach up to heaven with faith in your heart and say God I believe you right now your word says there's miracles for me and I'm believing you for a miracle and instantly 
I said instantly. You can feel the touch of God. You can feel healing virtue go through your body. And you can leave completely changed by the power of the miraculous. It's not hyperbole. It's not a fairy tale. It's the word of God. In the presence of God, there is miracles. You ought to clap your hands and shout to the Lord right now. In John, the second chapter, Jesus shows up at a wedding and performs his very first miracle. Everyone say the first. He performs his first miracle. He turns water into wine. It was really a juice drink. He turned it into the into into that juice drink for the wedding party, uh, so they would not be embarrassed. And I love what John chapter two and verse eleven says about this miracle. Uh, it states uh, this beginning. Everyone say beginning. This beginning of miracles did Jesus. This was the beginning of the miracles of Jesus upon the earth. I've looked all through the New Testament and I find the beginning of miracles, but I never find an ending to miracles in the Word of God. I can find where it started, but I cannot find where it ended, meaning that the miracle working power of God, it has not disappeared. It has not waned in power. It has not gone away. There is no end to it. But it is present for the church of God today. I believe in the miraculous. I I recall several years ago when I was still in Tucson. My tax man belonged to another, another belief system. And he was a good man, and I went to his funeral. Uh, and there was a, and, and that movement that he was a part of uh, back in its early days, way back when, if I named the names, some of you would recognize the movement. They were very big on the miraculous. He used to be a part of the apostolic movement uh, and then got caught up in false doctrine and went down a bad path. Uh, and uh, and they, they, they rejoiced uh, over the miracles in the past. And uh, I saw a piece of literature on their foyer table, uh, and the headline caught my attention. Uh, it said, Miracles Still Happen Today. Uh, and I agreed with that. Uh, and I began to read that article, uh, and it was citing a miracle that had taken place uh, seven years prior uh, to that day's date. Uh, their most recent miracle uh, was seven years uh, in the past past. Can I tell you uh, that is not the desire of God. Uh, That is not the plan of God. Uh, It's not the will of God. Uh, This beginning uh, of miracles did Jesus uh, and it has not stopped. Uh, It has not ceased. Uh, It is still uh, for the church of Jesus Christ today. Uh, In fact, Hebrews 13 and 8 uh, says Jesus Christ is the same uh, yesterday. Uh, The same Jesus that turned water to wine uh, is the same today and he'll be the same forever. I've seen too many miracles in this congregation within the past year to say that it's not for us. I'm here to preach to you tonight. If you have a physical need in your body, there is a miracle worker that can turn it around and get the glory for it today. You need not to go home with it. We saw it just a couple of weeks ago. My mother, all kinds of sick going on and Brother Muse laid hands on her and she never had to go pick up the prescription drugs from the pharmacy was she lucky? No the Holy Ghost was in the house and where the Holy Ghost is you can expect the miraculous I'm here to tell you I feel the glory of the Lord in this house right now I feel the glory of the Lord I know there's going to be miracles in fact you need not wait for an altar call if you have a need in your body, I would throw both hands in the air and say, Jesus, it's me. I need miracles right now in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Word of God, and by the power of the name of Jesus. We release the gift of faith in this house for miracles to happen right now in the name of Jesus. Would you shout hallelujah to the Lord and let him begin to touch you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, shakarabako, hallelujah, shakarabako, 
Go ahead. Keep praying of the Holy Ghost. You know what that is? That's the glory of God coming down into this house. And where the glory of God is, there is the miraculous in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You ought to clap your hands and shout to the Lord right now. I could spend the rest of the night talking about miracles that have taken place in the last year or so around here. It was not too long ago, Christina, you came into this house and your foot was all kinds of messed up. I think it was a Wednesday night and you were planning on going to ER afterwards. But she stepped into the altar as the Holy Ghost was filling this house. She stepped into the altar as a step of faith with pain in her foot as the Holy Ghost was moving in this house. And because the Holy Ghost was in the house and the name of Jesus was called out and faith reached up and touched heaven, God reached down and touched that foot and she never went to the ER and she didn't have a problem with it. Why? How did that happen? Do we have a magic powder? No, we have a powerful God. And when the glory of God fills this house, miracles and signs and wonders Wonders will take place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now that it's out and it's public knowledge that the felties are expecting, thank God for that. But it was just, it was, wasn't that long before they came up expecting. You can be seated if you want. It wasn't that long. I, I asked them if I could share this. They said, absolutely. They're in, they're in Yuma this week visiting family. I wanted her to share. She said, uh-uh. I said, I'll let you off this time, but next time you are. It wasn't too, too many weeks prior to them finding out that they were expecting. She went and met my wife for coffee. said, I need to talk to you, Sister Sansom. We, have incomp- we want to have a child. We're having complications. The doctor says it's probably going to be impossible. There's going to be all kinds of problems, uh, and we don't know if we'll ever be able to conceive. My wife told her, said, Sister Felty, I'm going to be praying for you. Sister Felty told her, told her, you can share this with your husband. She came home. She shared it with me. And immediately I felt a quickening in my spirit. I felt a quickening saying, uh, God is going to do something for her. God gave me a word of faith. It's not me, but the Lord impressed on me. This is going to be a miracle for the glory of God. You got to understand, I don't just go spouting those things off. Uh, I'm not just one of these blab it, grab it guys. But if God speaks it of my spirit, uh, then I speak it and it shall happen. We've got to learn to hear the voice of God. Is that all right? Uh, and so my, I told my wife that. She said, I feel the very same thing. Uh, my wife went over in one service or somewhere and began to pray for her and lay hands on her. And God began to touch her in a very powerful way. Uh, and, we, and I felt like God had done something for her. Uh, we got a phone call from them a few weeks later. They said, Pastor and Sister Sansom, we want to take you guys out for dinner and appreciate, for appreciation. And we was like, okay. And that's really awkward because I like to be the one that's taking people to dinner. They took us to Lolo's chicken and waffles. That is the will of God. If you ever want to get on my good side, just take me there and then drop the bomb. And I won't be as mad at you, I promise. So we go to Lolo's chicken and waffles, and it's feeling all kinds of warm fuzzy because Brother Felty's talking about, I'm so thankful for a pastor like you. And there's tears. And Sister Felty's telling my wife, thank God for a pastor's wife like you've never had one like you. That could be good or bad. I'm just saying, but I've never, you're a one of a kind. I've never had a pastor's wife like you. And I know you're praying for me, and I know you're caring for me, and you're watching for me. And Sister Sansom, you said you were going to be praying over, over this situation of the pregnancy, uh, not being able to conceive. And I want to let you know uh, that you don't have to pray that prayer anymore. You can change your prayers that it will be a healthy baby and a healthy delivery. What was it? Uh, they were in the place where the glory of God falls. Oh, come on, somebody. That's a miracle. Uh, They were in a place where the glory of God fell. They were in a place where the Holy Ghost came in uh, and spoke a word. uh, And a pastor's wife moved upon it. uh, And the pastor moved on it at a certain point uh, and spoke the word. uh, And the glory of God came in. uh, And I'm coming to tell you tonight, uh, when we experience the glory of God, uh, it's not just to make us feel good. Uh, We have a right uh, to expect uh, the miraculous, uh, these signs 
shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's not a myth. It's not a fairy tale. It's a reality. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are full of the Holy Ghost. You got miracle working power inside of you. You ought to go ahead and shout. You ought to go ahead and praise the Lord right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You need to realize that power is not just inside the man of God. It's in the, child, in the, in the, in the life of every child of God. You've got the same authority. I'm getting ahead of myself as the preacher. When your co-worker says, I just got to report cancer. Don't say I'm going to have my preacher pray. You lay hands on them and you pray in the name of Jesus. And let that Holy Ghost power flow through you. And you shall, you shall, you shall see the miraculous. Why don't you give the Lord praise for the miracles that have happened in the past right now. We're thanking him for what's happened in the past. But now I want to turn it around. Why don't you thank him for the miracles that are fixing to blow up in this house? The miracles that are fixing to blow up in your job and in your school and in your neighborhood and in your family. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Clap your hands and shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. You may be seated. The third item placed in the Ark of the Covenant. I've already tap danced all over it. I'm talking about the miraculous. It was Aaron's rod that budded. This served as a reminder that God had chosen Aaron to be the priest. And in choosing him gave him authority. God never chooses you for a job without giving you the authority and the power to do the job. I'll say that again. God never chooses you to do a job without giving you the power and the authority to complete the job. The Aaron's rod that budded is a symbol of authority. We first find it when Moses and Aaron appeared before Pharaoh. God had told Aaron to cast his rod down before Pharaoh, and it became a serpent. Pretty cool. Pretty powerful. And Pharaoh said, no big deal, called his magicians in. They threw their rods down. They became serpents as well. But the difference was Aaron's rod slithered over to those other rods and swallowed them all up. You see, the enemy may counterfeit the things of God because he wants to be just like God. He may counterfeit the things of God, but there is an authority. Say authority. You've got to catch this. That is granted to the child of God that is filled with the glory of God that will consume and devour the counterfeit. Later, that rod is used by Aaron as they're leaving. Aaron struck the waters of Egypt with his rod, and they turned to blood. Third, during their wilderness wandering, Aaron's rod was the only staff that produced buds, blossoms, and almonds, indicating God's choice of Aaron and his descendants as priest, indicating an authority for the priesthood. I've come to remind you that this authority is not just for the pastor of the church, but I've come to remind this entire church body that God is wanting to equip you for an end-time harvest and an end-time revival. The Lord has prompted me to remind you that we, that's you and me, are kings and priests in the kingdom of God. First Pe- we're kings and priests in the kingdom of God. First Peter 2 and 9, but you are a chosen generation. A royal church member. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are the high priest of your home. You are the royal priesthood. Jesus promised in Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18. 
These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The third thing in that box was Aaron's rod that budded. Letting us know that when the Holy Ghost fills your box, you're to the temple of the Holy Ghost. There is a priestly authority that settles in the life of every believer. We have been given power. We have been given authority not to say, wow, that's cool, but to actually apply it and use it. I've come to tell you, you are not a weak, emaciated Christian. You are not a church that is barely holding on. You're not a church that's barely making it. You're not a church that's being adversely affected by everything that's happening in our day. You have authority and you have power in the name of Jesus. So rise up, be loosed, and start using it. You need to walk out the doors of this church and start walking all throughout this city and say everywhere I walk belongs to God. My job belongs to God. My family belongs to God. My city belongs to God. My Starbucks belongs to God. It's not the high point of the devil anymore. It's God's territory because I'm going to walk in authority and I'm going to walk in power. I'm not going to walk with my head dug down, hiding my light underneath the bushel, but I'm going to let my light shine. I'm going to be looking for God opportunities. I'm going to be looking for God moments. I'm going to be looking for moments of the miraculous to happen and when I see them I'm not going to back away I'm going to step forward and say I'm a royal priesthood in the name of Jesus I've got authority on my life I've got the power of God inside of me I can lay hands on the sick I can lay hands on them and they shall speak with new tongues it's time to get it out of the church we shout about it we rejoice about it it's time to take it to the streets of Phoenix it's time to take it to your job and into your coffee shop and lose the power of God everywhere you go and God's not going to leave you hanging as you take that step of faith God's going to back you up God's going to go with you he said in the great commission go into all the world and I am with you always he's not with you unless you're going and so I will go in Jesus name knowing that he's going with me and he's not going to make me look foolish but if I take a step of faith he will work as well he will mirror my actions I'm going to walk in authority I'm going to walk in power I'm going to turn my world upside down in the name of Jesus would you lift your hands I love the Lord all over this house hallelujah 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 Oh, help me pray, church. Help me pray. God is wanting to do something in our hearts. He's wanting to change our thinking right now. Now I want you to pray with the authority that's inside of you. I get it. You're tired. I am too. I've been at the church since 715 this morning. First appointment at 845. But I'm feeling the touch of the Holy Ghost. And so I want you to pray not as a weak, emaciated, tired Christian. But I want you to pray as the royal priesthood that you are. With boldness and with authority. And say, God, let it be loose in my life. Let the walls and the hindrances come down. That I may walk forth boldly in the name of Jesus. Uh, Would you lift your voice and pray that way right now? If you're feeling the Holy Ghost settle on you, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost uh, over your city, over your job right now, uh, over the... 
people you're teaching a Bible study to right now. Hallelujah. That's it, transform. There's something being loosed in you. Uh, Ethan, that's it. Go ahead and speak it out. I can hear you right now. Uh, go ahead. There's an authority. There's a boldness resting on you. Uh, it's been hounded. Uh, it's been hit on the last four weeks of revival. Uh, Brother Campatella tapped into it. Uh, and now it's time to loose it and let it go in the name of Jesus. Uh, your world is waiting on you. Uh, your neighborhood is waiting on you. Uh, your job, your city is waiting on you. Uh, your Bible study that you're teaching, uh, they're waiting for you to step in and teach with authority in the name of Jesus you've got it go ahead and use it There's a wave of the Holy Ghost coming in here. Uh, there's a wave of the Holy Ghost. It's equipping you. It's empowering you. Uh, my prayer coming in tonight was God equip us to be the church you want us to be. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Uh, you know why we're seeing great revival in Darian's family? It didn't happen as quick as he wanted it to. Timing doesn't mean anything to God. It's everything to God. It's just not on our time frame and our time schedule. But he's been praying and walking in authority. In the beginning, he had to get his flesh subdued where he wasn't forcing it down them. But prayed and walked in authority and allowed God to do it. Now dad's been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uncle's been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what it is? He's not praying this pitiful prayer. Oh, God, please save my family. He's praying with authority. He's walking with authority. He's speaking with authority. You are a royal priesthood. Operate in it. I'm so thankful two of our students uh, taught their very first Bible study this last Thursday. Uh, and they went in scared half to death. Uh, but they didn't let the Bible study student know it. Uh, they walked in with confidence and boldness uh, because they felt the authority. The, the, they were full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and when you're full of the Holy Ghost, uh, there's an authority that goes with you. And they're operating in it. Uh, and they talked about how when she was being taught, all of a sudden her eyes lit up. She could see it. She could catch it. You know what it is? Uh, they're walking in the authority uh, and allowing the Holy Ghost to flow through them. Uh, it's not the desire of God for the Holy Ghost just to fill you. Uh, because if it fills you and never flows out, uh, you become sour. Uh, but if it fills you uh, and then flows through you to others, uh, that's a living stream of water. Uh, that's walking in authority. Uh, that's being used to God. Uh, what you feel God doing in this place right here uh, is simply to equip you for out there. Uh, so go ahead and operate in the authority God has given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands and love the Lord all over this house right now. Uh, hallelujah. 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 That's why a few weeks back I'm coming to a close right now. I don't, I don't even think we'll need music, but stand with me real quick before we come to these altars. That's why a few weeks back, I mean, the headlines were blaring about the world's largest satanic convention in Scottsdale. You guys remember that? Yeah. Fortunately, no one in this church came to me freaking out about it. We talked about it, but you weren't like, oh. But I had people in the state call me about it. What are we going to do about it? Do we need to go have a prayer rally in Scottsdale right in front of the building? And signs. And I was like, no. 
You're just going to draw more attention to it than what needs to be drawn. Furthermore, I'm not afraid of a satanic convention. I've got the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Another thing, when Satan was cast out of heaven, he was cast out with a third of his angels. That means there's two-thirds with us. He's outnumbered. I don't need to go over to Scottsdale and stand in front of their building. The, 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 that majority of angels can go do it. But I understand the authority in the life of a believer. And so from right here, I can continue praying. Furthermore, why make a big push for one weekend when we do this every day? And because it's a daily thing with us, we are the spiritually dominant force in that environment. And the world's largest satanic, this shows you how powerful the media is in stretching the truth. They was held at a hotel that would max out 500 people in their theater style seating. World's largest. Is that all you got, devil? And the news report says there were only probably 350 there, so there were probably only 250 to 300 max. I'm being generous. Why, why didn't we get all get in a, in a, in a, in a tizzy about it? Because we walk in authority. We walk in power. You take, I take Sister Burgess right here. Just celebrated her none of your business years old birthday or getting ready to. Missionary wife for years. You could take the largest arena in Phoenix, Arizona and fill it with a satanic convention chanting and praying to Satan. And that one lady right there could walk into the middle of that arena and begin to whisper the name of Jesus. And it would shut things down. Well, I'm not a missionary's wife. I'm a new believer. Doesn't matter. You've got the same Holy Ghost. I recall a new convert in the church that my dad pastored in series. Went over to San Francisco walking up and down Fisherman's Wharf. There was a lady out there reading tarot cards and poems and giving fortunes with satanic and witchcraft. And she just stood there and watched it because she used to be a part of that. The lady that was doing it looked right at her and said, I need you to leave because I cannot do what I'm supposed to be doing with your presence here. It was the authority of the Holy Ghost resting inside of her. I'm telling that, not trying, not trying to spook you, but let you know you've got a power so great inside of you. You've got more authority than you realize. When you walk into your job, they ought to feel a change and a charge in the atmosphere. When you pull through Dutch Brothers, they ought to feel a vibe they don't have. They ought to feel something powerful and I promise you they do and I want to make you aware of the authority you have in the Holy Ghost and it's not just to be operated in within, in here it's to be operated in out there how are we going to change our world by operating in the authority of the Holy Ghost and expecting the miraculous is there anybody in the house that has the Holy Ghost then you can expect the miraculous and you have authority. Uh, would you lift your hands and give God praise right now? Uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, I want you to come to the altar right now. Come standing in the center area. Squeeze in as close as you can, please. I know this is different than normal Sunday night. Our worship service was shortened. You all can thank me for that. You're all tired tonight, I can tell. I am too. Thank God for those that went to praise the Pentecost and minister today. It's not going to take very long in this altar tonight. But there's going to be a baptism of the Holy Ghost that comes into this place. It's already flowing. And it's going to fill you all over again. And you're going to walk out of here with an awareness of the miraculous that's inside of you. You're going to walk out of here aware of the authority that is inside of you. And it's not just for inside this place. 
there's going to be a boldness that settles on you. There's a world that is waiting on you. There's a world that is waiting on you. And we're not going to do it with our talent or ability. But we're going to do it through the power of the Holy Ghost. If you have received the Holy Ghost, you have experienced the glory of God. In fact, all of the Old Testament prophets and Old Testament heroes of the faith look to this day. I wish they could have seen this day. When Moses was writing out the law about the tribe of Levi and the priesthood and what they were to wear and how they were to perform, he was looking ahead to a day when everyone would be a priest. That's his day. They look to this day and wish they could have been a part of it. They all died in faith not having obtained the promise. Hebrews 11 says. But we are the generation that has. We've got that same authority and that same power. And I'm going to recap very briefly for you. The last part of this message that I preached from last Sunday night and tonight. When you receive the Holy Ghost. You are filled with his righteousness. You're filled with the miraculous power. And you're filled with authority. In order to operate in the miraculous and operate with authority, we must allow his righteousness to work inside of us. And so before we step into praying for the miraculous and the authority to flood into our lives, we're going to revisit what we did last night, last Sunday night. We're going to repent before God all over this house. Not that you are terrible, gross sinners, but repentance always makes a pathway for the miraculous and the authority to flood and the Holy Ghost to flood into one's life. Uh, my prayer lately has been, God, equip me and equip this church to be what you want us to be for the end time harvest. And so we're going to lift our hands and we're going to repent all over this house right now. Would you repent with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for your righteousness and your goodness. God, you are the only Holy One. We are nothing without you. I'm thankful that when you filled us with the Holy Ghost, you imparted your righteousness to us and changed our thinking and our and our likes and our dislikes. You changed our mind and our attitude, God. But we still deal in the flesh. And I'm asking you to forgive me, God. Forgive me of my sin and my transgression. Remove it far from me. Wash me with your blood in the name of Jesus. Let me be your tabernacle and your temple. Let there not be anything that would stand in the way of what you would have me to do in the name of Jesus. Let me not be a hindrance to the kingdom of God moving forward uh, above everything else. I must be saved, God. Uh, forgive me and cleanse me and wash me in the name of Jesus. Uh, make me like you. Fill me with your righteousness, God. Uh, forgive me of every evil word and every evil deed and every evil thought in the name of Jesus. Uh, and fill me with the presence of God. Uh, make me your tabernacle and your temple in the name of Jesus, I pray. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You ought to feel a, a lightning of your load right now. You ought to feel the presence of God ministering to you uh, and cleansing you right now. I thank you for cleansing me. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my spirit. Uh, cleanse my heart and my soul. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Uh, prepare a pathway for you to move into my life with the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and the glory of God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, and I give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for forgiving me. Uh, now would you lift your hands towards heaven. We have repented. Uh, God is ready to fill every one of you with the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Uh, I begin to give praise and glory to God. Uh, I'm going to release the word of faith in just a moment. Uh, and when I do, uh, I want you to begin to shout out hallelujah. Uh, and when you do, the Holy Ghost is going to fill you. Uh, and with that Holy Ghost, you're not just going to talk in tongues. Uh, but the miraculous is going to settle in you. I said the miraculous is going to settle in you. Uh, there's the potential for miracles in this house tonight. Uh, and there's an authority that is going to settle inside of you. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, where you walk out of this building with a boldness. Uh, would you begin to give him praise right now. Uh, I love you Jesus. Uh, I hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind in this house right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, 
We surrender our will to you completely. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, really release the gift of faith in this house. Fill your people with the Holy Ghost, with boldness and authority to operate in it. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Go ahead. Let the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now. It's for every individual in this house. There's a divine visitation of God. It's flooding into you right now. Uh, the glory of God is settling inside of you. Go ahead. Uh, get filled up with it. God's going to equip in you right now uh, to step into the week this week, uh, into the world this week, uh, and be his light. Uh, these signs shall follow them that believe. Uh, it's in you. Go ahead. Uh, he's equipping you that you may operate in it this week. There's miracles in this house right now. If you need a miracle, believe God for it. No one has to lay a hand on you. You can receive it right now. There's miracle power inside of you. You're going to step into your schools as we can pray for someone, and you're going to see the miraculous occur. You're accustomed to the flow of the Holy Ghost that's in this house. It's with us on a regular basis. But I'm praying a boldness would settle on you because we're used to doing this in here, but we're not used to operating in it out there. Would you lift your hands towards heaven and let God touch you with boldness right now? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray a holy boldness would settle upon them. I pray courage of the Holy Ghost would settle inside of them. Let them recognize the authority that is inside of them and let them step forward and operate in it. God, I'm asking you to open their eyes to God moments that surround them every day in their everyday life and let them step into those God moments and operate in it and touch the throne of God in the name of Jesus. Equip this church to be what you want us to be in the name of Jesus. Alleluia.
why don't you lift your hands right now, both hands towards heaven. Just love the Lord for his presence that's here in such a special way. Go ahead and lift your voice and love the Lord. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for talking to us, God. Thank you for challenging us in the spirit, God. Let this flesh die out that we can hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to help you understand a couple of things as you begin to operate in the authority God, God has given every believer. It's not just for the preacher. It's not for someone that's been in church for 50 years. It's for every believer from day one. Every believer from day one. Alicia and Bella, you've got the same Holy Ghost pastor has. You have the same power. I'm not trying to pick on you. But I believe in you. You've got the same power to lay hands on the sick and see miracles take place. You've got the same power to teach a Bible study and see them converted and lay hands on them and see them pray through to the infilling of the Holy Ghost seven is by speaking in tongues. You have that much. You have the same Holy Ghost I do. So let me just throw a few things out to you to help you out. Number one, it's available to everyone. Every person in this house. Number two, it's important that before you step out and begin to operate in authority, you must be under authority to God and the authorities in your life or else you're going to get messed up. You are. The seven sons of Siva in the book of Acts thought they could say, in the name of Jesus, just like everyone else, they had their lunch eaten. So before you begin to operate in this, you need to make sure you have your life in order and that you have a life of prayer. Because that life of prayer is going to allow you to hear the voice of God and feel that gentle nudge of God to step into a situation. I'm going to shock every one of you right now. I believe God attempts to speak to every one of us every day about God moments. But why don't I hear him? We're not listening. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. So you need to be praying, God, help me to hear your gentle whisper and feel your gentle nudge. And then when you do, you step in with that authority. You got to understand Jesus, as he walked upon this earth through the pages of the gospel, we know he healed blind people, he healed lepers, he healed lame people, he raised dead. But he didn't raise every dead person. He didn't heal every blind person. He didn't bring back every widow's son that had died. That's why when he said Lazarus come forth, it was just Lazarus. It wasn't the entire cemetery. It was just one. What made the difference? Why him and not others? I, I really don't know that. But I know this. Jesus said, I can't do anything the Father doesn't want me to do. That's the sense of international version. He was God robed in flesh, but he couldn't just do what his flesh wanted to do. He had to do what the Spirit of God wanted him to do. At one point, he said, the works that I do, he told Philip, he said, Be he said, believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me, or believe me for my very work's sake. The works that I do, the words that I say, I speak not of myself, but only what the Father tells me to do and what the Father tells me to say. In other words, he could not operate in that authority and power outside of the will of God. And so the key is not just to be walking around to everything saying, in the name of Jesus. The key is knowing, okay, I heard God speak to me about this. I'm going to step forward and operate in that authority, and God will perform the work. I have interacted with other couples that were unable to have children. Remember a couple in southeast Arizona. I love that couple dearly. They finally had to adopt a baby. And thank God for that. We rejoice in it. But they wanted to conceive their own child. And they, husband and wife, talked with my wife and I. They're in tears about it. We're in tears with them because we love this couple. Here's a couple that's done everything right and they can't have a child. And we told them, said, we're going to be praying for you that God will do something for you. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. And they never conceived. For whatever reason, I don't understand that. 
I don't understand. God blessed him with a beautiful baby through adoption. But I do know when the Felty, when Sister Felty spoke with my wife and she shared with me, there was a quickening. I could hear the voice of God speaking to me saying, God is going to do something special for that couple. And when I felt that, not my imagination, but it was the voice of God, I knew God was going to do something. And we spoke and we prayed and we operated in that. And God did the work. And so don't go out of here saying, don't go down to the cemetery down at 27th Avenue in McDowell and walk by every grave saying, in the name of Jesus, rise up. They're going to commit you to the Looney Tune Award. Okay? But you wait for that gentle voice. And you operate in that and see what the Lord will do. We know it is the will of God for him to heal the sick. So every time I pray for someone, I believe in the Lord is going to heal them and raise them up. If he doesn't do it, it's on God, not on me. I will not take the blame for the ones God does not heal because I cannot take the credit for the ones he does heal. And so I just make myself available and we let God do it. Your world is waiting on you this week, and I'm praying you recognize those God moments. And when you do, don't say, let me get my dad. Don't say, let me talk to my pastor and my youth pastor. You step into that door and you begin to minister the Holy Ghost and you see what God is going to do. God's equipping this church for end time revival. Would you lift your hands and love the Lord all over this house? God, I love you and I bless your name. I thank you for your presence and your power and your touch. Thank you for talking to us, reminding us of the power that is inside us. Thank you for filling us with your righteousness. Thank you for putting miracles in us through the glory of, of the Lord. And thank you for the authority you have given the church. Now, God, I pray that you'd open our sensitivity to your spirit this week. Let us walk in it and operate it in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. amen. God bless you. Look for God moments this week. We'll be back in the house of the Lord this Wednesday night. Let's pray for the Galindos right now. Baby is due next Sunday. Now, if you have your horror stories of childbirth, you're in childbirth labor for 48 hours and 96 hours, just keep it to yourself. Don't share your war stories with her. But we want a healthy baby, want a healthy delivery. Be nice if the baby is maybe born Tuesday night so they can be in the house of the Lord on Wednesday night and all that good stuff. I mean, come on now. Would you stretch your hands towards them and pray that God be with them this week? Father, I thank you for the blessing upon this couple. I pray the hand of God be upon Gabe and Lindsay and Kinsley Rose. Bring health to that baby in the name of Jesus. Bring health to this mother and father. Bring peace of mind. We thank you for your blessing and you brought them this far. We know you're going to take them the rest of the way. We thank you for a healthy baby and delivery in Jesus' name. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're so delighted for everyone that was in the house of the Lord tonight.